What's up YouTube, it's Ben, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you that there are rules around money and exactly what they are. Watch this until the end and you will know exactly how to have financial freedom for the rest of your life if you follow the rules. All right, so hey guys, my name is Ben Nader. If you already follow my channel, thank you. If you're brand new, welcome. We talk about finance, money, investing, software, recruiting, business, entrepreneurship, you name it, we talk about it. With that being said, subscribe if you like that kind of stuff. Join our Facebook group. It's down in the link in the description, Recruiter Empire. Um, so that's exactly where you should be, our brand new member of Recruiter Empire. And let's get right into the 12 rules I'm about to give you about money that you should absolutely follow. And if you don't, you're probably going to be screwed. All right. So since I talk a lot about business and entrepreneurship, here's the number one rule impact, right? Providing value, right? That equals income that equals money, right? So money just does not come out of thin air. Lottery winners lose money, right? Money is not made when you don't provide an actual impact or value or a solution to somebody else's problem. You actually need to have impact to actually create value and money. All right. So rule number two, you should always, always, always Keep an eye on your money. Never take your eyes off of your money. Know exactly where your money is. What is your money doing? Is your money working for you? Where is your money? Is your money like low? Is it high? Like, like where's it at, right? Like understand where all of your assets are, understand where all of your cash is. Are you not deploying enough cash? Are you not investing enough? Do you have just like a bunch of money sitting in the bank, like losing out to inflation? That's bad. Like look at your money, watch your daily accounts every single day and understand what's happening. Like always keep a bird's eye view on your money in general. All right. So number three, this is a really, really solid one. Listen, knowledge leads to wealth. So the more, you know, the more you will grow and the more you will earn. So things like understanding how to do X, Y, Z skill, whatever it is, right? Knowledge equals power equals money in school. They leave that last one off, but it equals earning potential, right? So personally, right? I have recruiter empire where we train people how to build their own recruiting empires, agencies, staffing agencies, recruiting agencies. They go on to make six figures, seven figures, right? Knowledge equals income. Knowledge equals money. Understand that the more that you learn and the more that you know, the more that you can earn, right? That's just simply how it works. So knowledge equals money. All right. So number four on the list of rules of money that you should need to follow. If, if you don't follow, you're not going to be in a good spot, right? You should always visualize your goals, right? Visualize your goals with money, right? Specifically, not just your general goals, but I'm talking about with money in the picture. Understand that if you want a mansion in Beverly Hills, and if you want to live that lifestyle, how much is it going to cost? And then what do you need to do to get there? Like step back and reverse engineer how that's going to work. If you want a super fancy, nice car, right? How much is that car? What do you need to do to, to get there? Right? Understand what that kind of stuff looks like. If you're a family and you have kids, you want to send your kids to college and you want to pay for the entire thing, right? Understand what you need to do to be able to have that money in place so you can do it. Visualize goals and visualize the money as it pertains to those goals so that you can actually put two and two together and say, okay, I know exactly how this is going to happen. So affirm that visualize it, put those into goals and know exactly how your money is going to work for itself. So that eventually when the day comes that you're going to do the thing you're going to do with the money you need to do it with, you have it and you follow the rule. All right. So number five, literally couldn't be more important. You need to invest your money. All right. General rule of thumb is investing around 20% of your money of your earned income, right? Or passive income, whatever it is, the both of them, all income earned or passive, you should be investing around 20%. That could be on a monthly basis, right? Or on an annual basis, totality, gross receipts, right? Think about it however you want to think about it. But the number should be around 20, 25% if you want to be aggressive, but 
understand that investing is critical to you growing your money. Money doesn't grow on trees, it grows on investments, right? So with that said, you can invest into real estate, you can invest into businesses, you can invest into yourself, right? By training and going through mentorship, going through coaches, right? Guides, people that will show you how to make more money, right? invest invest right whether it's in the market businesses or investing into yourself right just understand that you absolutely 100 percent need to follow this rule of investing your money if you don't do this you're not going to have any money in your later years you definitely won't have any retirement money and you're not going to have the money that you currently have growing you need your money to work for you. That's what it's supposed to do. This is what the 1% do. This is what the rich of the rich do. They invest their money heavily, right? That's why they're rich. 99% of people completely skip this step. They don't even think about it. They spend all their money. They don't invest any of it, right? But the 1% absolutely focus on investments first, then liabilities and all the fun toys and all the things that you want to buy after your investments are making you more money. All right, so number six, this kind of like follows right after number five. Find somebody that's like a millionaire or a billionaire, if you know someone like that, right? It's pretty common that you can find someone that's a millionaire. That's pretty easy. Someone that makes seven figures per year, right? A million plus. Not so common to find a billionaire, but if you do so, that's even better. But find someone like that as a mentor. Find someone like that as a guide, right? So somebody that's making a million dollars, seven figures plus, whatever it is, that person knows how to make money. They know how to make money, they know how to keep money, and they know how to grow their money, right? So with that said, find one of those people, utilize them as a mentor, utilize them as an example, copy what they're doing. What they're doing is right. It's accurate, right? They probably created a business. They've probably amassed a lot of money. They probably utilized that money properly for investments. And they probably invested in themselves a lot so they can learn more and grow more. And basically that is what it's all about. So definitely find someone, a millionaire, billionaire, whatever you can find as a mentor to copy, to mimic, to go after, follow exactly what that person's doing. You don't need to reinvent the wheel, guys. Money is not that difficult of a game. Once you know it, you know it. So find somebody that's already doing it and just copy what they're doing, right? Find a mentor. All right, so number seven, this is something that people never really talk about. And it's actually something that a lot of people don't even understand, but utilize credit to build wealth, okay? Utilize credit and debt to build wealth. So. Let me give you an example. If you have like a million dollars in cash, right? Sitting in the bank, it is wasting away to inflation, right? So instead, you should buy a bunch of real estate and put it on Airbnb so that it not only cash flows for you, but the monthly cash flow pays for the actual mortgage. So it's a self-sustaining house. You don't have to pay for a mortgage and you actually make a ton of money back, right? and it's passive income, meaning you don't have to do much other than some management and some various other things to keep that stuff up, right? So that being said, this is how the rich get more rich, right? And the poor get more poor because they don't do things like this, right? But utilizing debt and utilizing credit and things like that, let's say you didn't have liquid capital, you didn't have a million dollars cash, right? Utilize lines of credit, right? Maybe you're a really, really good steward of your money. You just don't have a lot of money, but you can open up a, a line of credit with Chase Bank, Wells Fargo, like I don't know who, but open up a line of credit, get qualified for some amount, right? And get your first like real estate rental, get your first business loan, right? Get a loan that you can utilize to invest in some sort of course or mentorship to invest into yourself, right? Utilize credit and debt to make yourself more money. All right, so number eight is create an O fund. Basically, if the hits the fan, you wanna have money in the bank, right? So this is the whole thing. And 
everyone should be taught this a lot of people don't know this and a lot of people don't take the time or energy to even actually do this because it's something that people don't want to do they don't want to put money away they don't want to put money in a certain spot right sorry dave ramsey i get it the whole thing about putting all of your money in cash and utilizing no credit no debt no none of that but this is an important piece you do need to have something like a, a fund right that you just keep to the side that's like let's just i don't know say six months of living expenses right really really low level living expenses like i'm talking about the cheapest apartment and food right like for doomsday like this is like if anything happened and you absolutely needed that money like keep that money around right like don't have it tied up have it liquid so it's available it doesn't have to be a huge lump sum of money it just has to be a certain amount of money about six months you could even make it four months but make a fund that allows you to have the capability to sustain yourself for as long as needed if you ever do, God forbid, need to have that fund go to use. All right, so number nine, never put good money after bad money. So if you made a bad investment, right? And the investment performed mediocre or bad, right? Never invest in that same thing again, right? Or if you tried something, right? Tried something once and you put some money towards it, right? And it didn't work out so well. The expectation did not meet you know, the outcome, right? Don't put more money into that. Like run, don't do it again, right? Never throw good money after bad money. So if you have more money, just make sure that it's not going to another bad place. That's all. All right, so number 10, this is like kind of obvious, but let me explain it, right? You should always be decreasing your debts and increasing your assets, right? You always wanna have way more assets than you have debt in certain scenarios, right? I'm not gonna go into that with debt and real estate and business investments and other things like that and lines of credit, but you always wanna have more assets right? Then you want to have liabilities, right? So a car, right? An exotic car, something that costs like $300,000, right? That's a liability. It doesn't pay you. An asset, something like an Airbnb or something like a business or something like investing in yourself or a skill that you can use to make money, that is an asset, right? You are your greatest asset, by the way. So investing in yourself is the best investment you can ever make. So this rule basically just means that you should always, always, always get out of debt first, right? And then start building out assets, buying assets, meaning cash flowing assets, things that pay you money, right? So that's the rule. All right, so number 11, people always say more money, more problems. That's not true. Here's the deal. More money just means more responsibility. So as you amass more wealth, as you get wealthier, let's say you make half a million dollars, and then all of a sudden you make a million dollars, and then you make $2 million, and then you're worth $5 million. Listen, as you gain more wealth and as you have more money, you need more responsibility around all of that, right? This means looking at that money very seriously in terms of how are you going to deploy that money, right? How are you going to put that money to use, to work for you, right? What are you going to invest in mainly, right? Like, what are you gonna do? Are you just gonna go spend money like crazy and just buy a bunch of houses and buy a bunch of like cars and yachts or whatever? That's not a good idea, right? The responsible thing to do following the rule would be being responsible about how you use that money. And let's use that number like $5 million, right? Generally speaking, I would just say off the cuff here, right? I would probably buy into a bunch of commercial real estate because that's a hot market, right? Then I would probably put a lot of that money into the stock market as well, because right now prices are super on sale. Everything's low, 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 low. So you can buy in and in like six months, you're gonna be way up. And with that being said, put that money to work for you where it's actually gonna cash flow and it's gonna be a ton of assets for you, right? But it involves you being responsible about how you use the money. All right, so the last one, number 12, more money helps you accomplish more things. And I'll put that in a few different ways, right? More money helps you provide a bigger impact on the world. More money 
allows you to provide more value to more people in your life, in the world, in general, overall. What do you want to do in this life, right? Right? You cannot take it with you. So when you amass large amounts of money, right? Let's say you get to that net worth of 5 million, right? It could be a hundred million. It's the same thing. But at the end of the day, with that money, more money means more impact, right? More ability to help others, more ability to help people get to your level, right? And more ability to basically just provide value overall. Your legacy, right? What you'll be remembered for, what people will think of what you've done when you leave will be whatever you did with that, right? How you did that. If you were responsible, if you invested correctly, if you got to that main level of money that you wanted to get to, what happens at the end? How you use that, right? More money equals more impact, more value, and you're able to just provide more of a solution for more people so that at the end of the day, nobody can say a word about you other than, wow, that person really, really did things well with their money.